the NFL hasn't seen Mr. Playoff D in the playoffs yet. Playoff D being Daniel Jones. Playoff Daniel. Dirty Dan. It's all coming back. They ain't never seen dual threat Danny come in the playoffs and go to another level. I feel like if he goes in the playoffs and he is different because there are playoffs. There- Bro, we we saw with Eli. I'm not notches, making no yes. Eli Manning comparisons. Not there just are in notches, football. Yes. Not just in football. In almost every sport, there's dudes when they hit the playoffs, it's like they're completely. It's like a light different. switch. It turns completely on completely different. So I feel like, you know what, this playoff game, you know that we that we may or may not have is gonna tell a lot. Playoff say say. And do some of his thick legs and run over some grown men. You never seen playoff sexy Daxy handle two grown men in each hand and bulldoze them. They called me a madman. We have a playoff win in 2022. It's been 10 years. Like 11 seasons. The 2011 season, 2012, you know, postseason was the last time the New York Giants won a playoff game. And man, it's been so long. And Daniel Jones is him. Daniel Jones is him. Saquon Barkley is that guy. Dexter Lawrence is the best interior lineman in the NFL. And I tried to tell y'all. I tried to tell y'all for like a month now when I realized like, yo, we could actually clinch this playoffs. It's like an epiphany hit me. I'm like, we're a young team. We're a hungry team. A team that plays good, clean football. A team that executes. And the offense was starting to click at the right time. And it was the offense that won us that game yesterday. The defense, they they were okay. They didn't have their best game. But the offense was what won us that game My God, the Super Bowl agenda is still on. I said like two weeks ago, three weeks ago, when this Giants team could legitimately make a run to the playoffs, people looked at me strange. But we have a defensive line that's coming on. Dexter Lawrence led into your linemen, I believe, if not all linemen, in pressures and quarterback hits in wildcard weekend. Do you know who was in second place? Leonard Williams. The Giants have both of those guys on the interior. Kayvon was kind of held up a little bit. Nothing to worry about. Of course, Aziz got injured. I'm hoping he can play on Saturday. But this defensive line is getting the job done. It looked like at times we could get to quarterbacks with just rushing four over the past month. That's why, and the offense clicking is why, Daniel Jones just emerging and stepping up. Like I said several times, I I don't know why that came to mind, all right? I'm not going to lie, I was thinking Eli, but I don't want to compare Daniel and Eli because they're, they're so different in terms of how they quarterback. But I was thinking he probably has this unlocked level to him that we don't know yet because it's going to be his playoff debut. And look at how great and flawless he was in his playoff debut. I don't think you can really argue with what I'm about to say. Daniel Jones looked like one of, if not the best quarterbacks in wildcard weekend. He was right up there, if not better than Josh Allen. Right up there, if not better than Joe Burrow. Definitely better than Trevor Lawrence. And Trevor Lawrence still had an amazing game with that comeback. And he looked overall like a top five talent in the postseason. And for that reason alone, I'm so serious when I say for that reason alone, if he just has that playoff level to him, much like how there was a playoff Eli, for that reason reason alone, he should be re-signed, and he's the franchise quarterback. Like, that's how much it convinced me. And I was already kind of slowly being turned back. I'm not going to sit here and lie to y'all and say that I was completely convinced from the beginning. Nah, I was I was definitely a DJ fan for, like, his first three years, but lost me a little bit. I definitely lost a little bit of belief under the Joe Judge tenure and then under Brian Dayball. Man, what a resurgence. What an absolute resurgence. And speaking of Brian Dayball, this is... Damn near the same team as last year in the playoffs with a playoff win. That man is coach of the year with no doubt. Coach of the year without a doubt. And just real quick, I want to get back to the defense because Wink Martindale 
I was questioning the defensive game plan yesterday because we kept letting up these third and super longs. But after the game, when I went back and I looked at it, I was like, I saw what they were doing. They limited Justin Jefferson to just like 47 yards in the entire game. And Adoree Jackson, who every Giants fan, they knew in the back of their mind, he's going to be big when he comes back for this team. He was basically shadowing and following Justin for a lot of that game. And of course, he had help over the top. Of course, there was double teams and whatnot. But it shows you how much Adoree Jackson matters. And we held Justin Jefferson to 47 yards. And we said, get to TJ Hawkinson and make him beat us. And they did do that. And he had a great game. But he couldn't convert that fourth and eight at the end. I'm telling you, the Super Bowl agenda is still on with this team. Our offense looks like one of the best in the NFL right now. Our defense, if they get back on track in terms of points allowed, <laughs> is going to be back to being one of the best defenses in the playoffs. And we're matched up against a team now. If you look at the road ahead, the road to the Super Bowl, we're matched up against a very familiar team. Divisional games always go a certain way. We got blown out in the first one, but in that second one, where I, I keep saying that our backups really pushed Philadelphia. And people, like, some fans don't want to listen to it. Some fans look at it as, like, a blue lens. But our backups did push Philly. They were playing for that first seed. With that in mind, with the confidence this team is rolling in with, with being one of the hottest team in the playoffs right now, and with how our offense is clicking, healthier, everything about this team is just better, we have a shot in Philadelphia and if we could somehow overcome the mounting that is Philly, because I do think they'd beat our toughest matchup, I think we could beat San Fran in the conference championship. Crazier things have happened. And this is this is where superstition comes in now, and, and it's a lot less like uh, logic, I'll admit. But look at 2011, man. We weren't supposed to be half the teams we beat on the road in 2011. And the Giants, with the exception, I'd say, of the 86 Super Bowl, they've always gone on sort of a miracle decade run to get to the Super Bowl and win it. And that's not to take away any credit from the players because they 100% deserve it. A lot of them are Hall of Famers. But it's just to say, we've seen this. We know who our team is. Young team poised for the Super Bowl. And until we get eliminated, I'm going to keep chanting it. Until we get eliminated, I'm going to keep saying it. Daniel Jones making playoff history in his playoff debut as the first quarterback with 300-plus uh, yards 70 rushing yards or more, and two touchdowns in a playoff win. Saquon Barkley with 100 all-purpose yards plus in his playoff debut. Dexter Lawrence leading interior lineman in pressures and quarterback hits in his playoff debut. Brian Dable winning in his playoff debut. It's just, it feels good. Really good. And I, I might be blinded by the blue wave, but I feel some special with this team. I really do. And we haven't even really maximized everybody on either side of the ball yet, in my opinion. Like, Aziz has yet to be fully healthy in a game. And Kenny Galladay was just blocking his butt off out there. I don't know. Maybe that earns him a couple passing snaps this time around. I'm just saying. I'm like, there's so much. We use Matt Breida, for example, that I was very happy about. I've been asking for it all season. He was very effective in the run game. They're probably going to use him more. You know, each game plan is different. But... The Giants solidified themselves as one of the best teams in the NFL yesterday. Daniel Jones solidified himself as a franchise quarterback and the best quarterback out of the 2019 draft class anyway. Keep that playoff agenda in mind, y'all. I feel like every fan should be cheering for the Super Bowl until we get eliminated. That's it for now, man. Just had to do like a real quick fan, just pure fandom video for y'all. And I'm out. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you for checking out my channel, The Hub, here on Giants YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you hear every time I put out a video. Like it, share, and subscribe, and I'm out.